Let us pray. Lead us, Lord, as we tread this desert path. Lead us into your righteousness, into the cause of right and justice and equity for all people. Lead us, God, in this moment and speak to us and through me and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. It's in the matchless name of Jesus, who is the Christ that we pray. Let all God's people say amen, amen, and amen. Beloved, here's the good news. Everything is gonna be all right. Not just some of the things or a piece of the things or a small portion of things, everything. Not a fragment or a fraction or a morsel or a section or a segment or a sliver or a stub or a scrap. Everything. All things are going to be all right. Beloved, I have to believe this because if God is the creator of all things, then by definition, there is no thing that stands outside of the reach of God. And if no thing stands outside of the reach of God, the creator of all things, then by necessity, everything will be all right. What good news this is on this day, this first Sunday in Lent during this desert season. I don't know who needs to hear me today, but I need you to hear me today. Everything will be all right, to be sure. This is no traditional Lent. We need not be metaphorically thrust into the desert, to the wilderness, because already we have been in the desert, the wilderness for nearly a year. And coupled with the cold barrenness of winter, we're already experiencing the lentiest Lent that has ever been Lented, someone once said, yeah, this year, this Lent is quite difficult already. And on Ash Wednesday, the start of Lent, I preached as we worshiped with Columbus Avenue and Charles AME, I preached that because of our current context, we must read the text a little bit differently this year. We at Union, we are reimagining Lent because of what's happening around us and to us and the feeling that, that is happening within us, the context that which surrounds us, we must then, we have to, we are invited to approach the text, the words, the narrative differently this Lent, this season, this year, because all that is surrounding the text, the context is so different. You see, typically Lent is a season of restraint and of self-denial, of giving up and holding back. But on Ash Wednesday, I shared that personally, I'm not giving up anything for Lent this year because this past year when all much Already so much has been taken from us. What else is there actually to give up? We've lost friends and friendships and homes and relationships and family. We lost life as we once knew it. I'm not giving up anything for Lent this year because I, if I'm honest with you, and I believe there's others who might have felt this way. There's been many times this past year that I've simply wanted to give up. On this first Sunday of Lent, during a year that is just so different, today's message is queerly straightforward. 
God is carrying us through this wilderness and we are not alone and everything will be all right. Although we do not always know what's next, we may not be able to see everything that is in front of us. There is one who created all things that holds all things. So even though we might not see everything, we might not know everything, still we can proclaim that everything is going to be all right. God is guiding us. God is leading us. We may not have individually the master plan, but thank God there's a master with a plan who is guiding us and directing us. This is why we sing. Lead me, Lord. Lead me in thy righteousness. Make thy way plain before my face. Yes, beloved, this sermon is a song of comfort. And let us echo the song verse and make it plain. God is directing us and will make us to dwell in the safety of God's sacred dwelling place, even in this desert. We are met by God. Right, so, so Lent is not only for giving up, it's for getting up and to reclaim the life that springs up in us, like those dry bones in the valley. When we are met by the breath of God, by the spirit of the living God who is with us, alive in this room, when we meet God, even in the barren places, God gives us new life. Right, I'm not giving up anything for Lent this year in the traditional sense. Uh, in fact, I'm intending to indulge a little bit more this season to claim life in the fullness of its abundance so that this season might be one of lavishness in the unconditional and reckless love of God. I said this Ash Wednesday, and it's worth repeating this day, the season of Lent. I'm suggesting as we prepare for Easter, we ought to start living into Easter a little bit early this year. That's why we began the service as we did with that throwback from Easter Sunday 2020, let the people praise. In fact, you may know that this long period between Ash Wednesday and Holy Saturday, is actually 46 days and the 40 days that marked the period we call Lent, it excludes Sundays. And the tradition has taught us that every Sunday in Lent is considered a mini Easter where we break the traditional period of solemn prayer and we rejoice on Sundays, these mini Easters before returning to the Linton, the Linton Desert. So this is my approach to Lent this year. What if Lent, since we're already in the barrenness of winter, what if we rejoice a little bit more this time round in the midst of the barrenness of winter? What if we claim the spring of Lent? Right, because Lent is from that old English word meaning spring. And what if those many Easters might occur with more frequency and we might experience a foretaste of God's glory divine? What if something bubbles up in us, lectin meaning spring, and spring comes a little bit earlier this year. And we experience that divine reversal that we claim on Resurrection Sunday when life comes from death. So spring might emerge from winter even in this moment. And we start celebrating even in advance this Lent 
God's word speaking to us and reviving us and comforting us and reminding us that yes, no matter what we're going through, Everything is going to be all right. This is the simple truth that sometimes we just need to hear and we need to sing. And it sounds like music to our ears. This sermon is simply a song of comfort. I'm going to avoid uh, theological acrobatics and philosophical backflips. It'll lack the homiletical gymnastics and rhetorical flourishes. There's no Hebrew or Greek wordplay or fancy illustrations. It's simple, straightforward, in the queerest kind of way. And it's grounded in the song, the Psalms that give us comfort, that grant us assurance in the time of trials. We've learned some of them as children some of them we've committed to memory and we have written them on the tablets of our hearts. We've heard them throughout our lives and I believe during this time in our lives, they are songs that we must sing because sometimes we just need to hear the refrain of these songs, these psalms of comfort. Again, we need to hear it spoken that everything will be all right because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall never be in want. God makes me to lie down in green pastures, leads me beside the still waters. God restores my soul. Leads me in the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the hardest of places, I fear nothing. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, you comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. enemies you anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in God's presence my whole life long. That Psalm 23, we, we know Psalm 24, that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein for God has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods, which allows us to say with the Psalmist from chapter 27, that the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I believe, oh yes, the psalmist said that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So wait for the Lord and be strong. And during this valley, let your heart take courage and lift up your eyes to the hills as the psalmist wrote in 121, from where will my help come? My help comes from the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, and God will not let your foot be moved. And God will not let you fall. The God who keeps you will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper and the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Yeah, everyone ought to have a psalm or two or three that you can call on when you need to hear good news in the midst of bad times. When you just need to be reminded when you're struggling and carrying all of the things that you're carrying, you need to be reminded that God is carrying you and you can make it and you will make it. And yes, everything beloved will be all right. This is a song of comfort. Traditionally, during Lent, we sing this song of comfort, lead me Lord as a precursor to the scripture reading. Usually it's a prelude, a preface to the message. Today on this first Sunday of Lent, when we're living in the Lenten wilderness already and we're struggling to shake the dust so we can live again and dance again and rejoice again. The song of comfort in Psalm five, it isn't a prelude the main verse for us today. Yes, as we travel this Lenten journey, Psalm 5 is the source of that song, Lead Me, Lord. 
And for me, Psalm 5 is coming alongside the 23rd and the 27th. And Psalm 121, as those psalms that I call upon to bring comfort. Comfort means to make strong. Those songs of comfort that we can sing late in the midnight hour. And be reminded, as in verse 3, O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. And even through the watches of the night as I pray. For you are a God who delights not in wickedness, and evil will not journey with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, it is written in the seventh verse of Psalm 5, I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O oh Lord. Lead me in your righteousness because of your ways and because of my enemies. Make your way plain before me. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy and spread your protection over them so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord, and you cover them with favor as with a shield. Seems to me that there are four key lessons that comes from this fifth Psalm, that song of comfort. Number one, rest assured and trust that God is our refuge. And be sure everything may not feel good, but everything will be all right. Remember that the creator of all things is with you and guiding you and leading you and directing you. And in your work, in your resisting, be reminded as you resist that evil will not prevail. Remember that Justin, as you do the work in Memphis and all that is wrong will be made right. So the first lesson, rest assured. The second lesson, remember God's promise. Number three, resist the injustices that that surround us and the fourth is rejoice. Rejoice, Here, here's the, the Psalm again, this time taken from the inclusive Bible. It says, take note of my words, Yahweh. Understand my sighs. Listen to my cry for help, my ruler, my God, for it is to you that I pray. Yahweh, every morning you hear my voice. Every morning I put my request before you and I wait. You are not a God who delights in treachery. Evil cannot live with you. Arrogant people cannot stand in your presence. You hate all that twist the truth. You destroy those who lie and abhor the bloodthirsty and deceitful, but I, because of your great love will enter your house. I will worship in your holy temple in awe and reverence because of my enemies. Guide me into your justice. Make straight your way before me. For nothing they say can be trusted. Their hearts teem with treacheries. Their throats are open graves and their tongues speak nothing but deceit. Pronounce sentence on them, O God. Let them fall by their own devices because they fall away from your word. But let all those who take refuge in you be glad and rejoice forever. Protect them, protect us. Those who love your name will rejoice in you. And as for the just, Yahweh God, you surround them with the shield 
of your will. Be glad and rejoice. That's the message of this song of comfort. We've now reached the end of the sermon, but I wonder if we might make a new beginning this season. During this year of inspiration at Union, as we seek to be inspired again on this journey that God is leading us through with God's transfiguring leadership. Here's the invitation. What will be the source of your rejoicing this season? What are the practices, the habits that you take on this season? What are your intentions, your desires, your hopes, your aspirations for this journey toward Easter? So I invite you as we are blessed in music to go ahead and take that pen and paper, or maybe you're using a cell phone and spend a couple moments just writing and claiming your hope, your intention as we begin this journey toward Easter. How we might make every Sunday and every day in between inspired by Easter. Maybe it's baking. Maybe it's going for a walk through Boston like Gary. But let's be intentional. What we're going to do to reclaim our joy and rejoicing and through these practices as we sing our song, may they be our ode to joy. Thanks be. Amen. <laughs>